Welcome to Holy Trinity and our service for Passion Sunday, the fifth Sunday in Lent. In our worship today, we turn to ponder the cross and the coming Passion of our Lord. In our service, our hymn is It Is A Thing Most Wonderful. And after the communion, Andrew and Rosie sing a duet of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, set to a new arrangement and composition by Andrew, a musical meditation of the Passion. Next Sunday, our church reopens for worship. We look forward to welcoming you there if you are able to join us. Our service on Sunday is at 10.30 and each Wednesday at 11 o'clock. A very warm welcome to Holy Trinity in Air on this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, traditionally known as Passion Sunday. Wherever you are, welcome as we meet in Christ's name and in his presence. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, for we meet in Christ's name. May we know his peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world. And so, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And we continue with our prayers of preparation as we pray the Collect for Purity, as together we pray Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the collect for Passion Sunday, this fifth Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. Merciful God, look upon your family as we travel to the foot of the cross, and by your great goodness guide us in body, that by your protection we may be preserved in heart and mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world, without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, the twelfth chapter, beginning at the twentieth verse. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. 
Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and said that it was thunder. Others said that an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, on this Passion Sunday, we enter a new chapter of our Lenten journey. In the Anglican condition, this fifth Sunday in Lent is known as Passion Sunday, which is a little confusing, as within the Roman Catholic Church, it is next Sunday, Palm Sunday, that is known as Passion Sunday. But we are a church in the Anglican Communion and a part of that tradition. So today, here, is Passion Sunday, the beginning of Passion Tide. Today our thoughts and our prayers turn to the cross and the coming Passion of our Lord. We turn to the cross on which Jesus offers himself to us and for us. When, as he says in our Gospel reading, on the cross, lifted up and arms open wide, all are drawn to him by his love into his embrace. We are asked to ponder the cross, what it means to us and for us as we seek to be Jesus' disciples today. And as well we should, for the cross and the message of the cross lies at the heart of our faith, the good news we proclaim and seek to live. In the first centuries of the church, there were few images of the crucifixion and the horror and barbarism of Jesus' death on the cross. But today, it is the symbol of our faith. And why? Because for the cross is not about death, but it is about life. It is a sign of hope for us as we try and make sense of the world and of our experiences within it. And it surely speaks to us in these days of the coronavirus pandemic. And as we try to follow Jesus, be set as we are in the traditional words of one of my favourite hymns by dismal stories and the occasional giant, hobgoblin and foul fiend. Our papers, 
our TVs, all of our news sources are saturated with bad news. Dismal stories and tragic events near and far. The horror of all that the pandemic has wrought in our world and in people's lives and livelihoods. There are disasters, wars and repression around the world. And trying to make sense of all of this, as well as what may be happening in our own lives and communities, can be a daunting task. But I think that the cross can help us as we seek to link our faith and what may be happening to us and in the world. For the cross reminds us of God's presence of God's love for us. That he is with us in every aspect of our life. There is no part of our lives or of our human experience where God is not and does not journey with us. On the cross, Jesus shared in the depth of our human suffering. On the cross, he bore all that we bear. And as we today bear the burden of our lives and living, he is with us. And the cross points too to the fact that suffering is a part of what it is to be a human being. I do not believe that being a Christian protects like holy bubble wrap those who trust in the Lord. It doesn't protect us from things happening to us. Indeed, people came to Jesus and asked him the very same question. And his response was, to paraphrase, that things go wrong in the world. That's how it is. And it is not a judgment on us, the things that happen to us, are not a judgment by God on what we have or haven't done. We live in a world that has free will, in which things and we go wrong. God is there with us to sustain and strengthen us through it, not as the one who sends these things to us as a punishment sent upon us. And the good news of the cross is that Jesus doesn't ask us to understand, to make sense of what's happening in the world, to us or to others. Just think of Peter Peter, who throughout the gospel story, gets things wrong time and time again. And if Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends and confidants, if he can get it so wrong, if he can misunderstand all that's happening, then we can know it's all right if we're the same. So can we. Jesus doesn't ask us to have all the answers. What he asks of us is to have faith in him, to trust in him and in his love, which on the cross brought all within his embrace brings us to God. It is often a struggle for us to see any rhyme or reason in our lives and experiences, to make sense of what's going on in them and in the world around us, and suffering can make us more aware of the frailty and fragility of our own existence. It raises many more questions than we can answer. 
But as we look at the cross, Jesus asks us to trust in him who died for love of our love, with love that was stronger than and broke the bonds of death and destruction and the chains of hell. Jesus crucified shows us that we have to rely not on our own strength, but on God, upon him and his strength. Because Jesus promises that he will be with us, that his spirit will sustain and strengthen us through each hour of each day, through the good times and in the bad. We don't have to understand everything. But we do have to put our hand into his, to trust in him, in Christ crucified, in his love, in his mercy, and in his grace. So good reason, as we seek to follow Jesus, and as we continue our journey through Lent and through life, to cling to the old rugged cross. And our prayer may echo the words of Isaac Watts' hymn, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingling down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Amen. And so we come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Lord of the Church, may we bring others to know you, in knowing you to love you, and in loving you to serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom. Guide and strengthen, we pray, the mission and outreach of your people. As on the cross, you were lifted up and drew all to yourself. May we, through the people that we are, the things that we do, bearing your light and life and love in our life, lives, draw others to you. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders of nations, for rulers of peoples, that they may work with sensitivity and in humility, as they seek to fight the coronavirus, to protect lives and livelihoods. We pray for nations emerging from tyranny, for freedom movements and all who work for liberty. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who have been generous to us, who have shared their resources and their lives. We pray for parents who have sacrificed for us, for their giving of time and attention. We pray for those who have been denied love, for all who have been deprived of their well-being. 
we remember today. And pray especially for those children who are taken into care. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give comfort to the bereaved. Give courage to the dying. We pray for all who have entered where sorrow and pain are no more. We remember loved ones who have entered into eternal life. And we join with them to praise your holy name. And in a few moments of quiet, we bring to you all those people and situations on our hearts and on our minds. Trusting in your love, shown forth upon the cross. Trusting that we can come to you, knowing that you love us and those for whom we pray. And so in a few moments of quiet, we bring to you those people and situations on our hearts and on our minds. And so we join our prayers with the prayers of all God's people in heaven and on earth. As we pray, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us offer these gifts and ourselves to the Lord. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. And as we offer these gifts and ourselves to the Lord, so together we pray, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. Your wisdom draws beauty from chaos, brings a harvest out of sorrow, and leads the exiles home. In Christ your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven, and strangers made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as sons and daughters in our Father's house. We who by Christ's power follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of his obedience, now offer you our praise with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, joining the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for Christ in whom the world is reconciled. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made. Through that dark struggle, death was swallowed up in victory, that light and life might reign. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died. Your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. And as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. And trusting in his love for us, in his presence with us, so together we join in the prayer for spiritual communion as we pray. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus our Saviour, who feeds his people and gives them eternal life. Though we cannot consume the gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we do receive Christ's saving presence, the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Saviour. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you were lifted up upon the cross for us and for our salvation. Help us to triumph over evil and to do good, to give ourselves as you give yourself to us and to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
As our service draws to its close, so we pray God's blessing upon ourselves and upon one another, all those we hold in our hearts and all for whom we pray. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all those whom you love. And may you know his peace and his presence with you today and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.